Hello everybody, my name is Star Raptor, and today I'm going to be talking about the latest episode of Game of Thrones, which is Season 8, Episode 5. This is the penultimate episode of Game of Thrones. That's right, the second to last episode. I still cannot believe those words are coming out of my mouth. We just have next week. But anyway, we have a lot to talk about this week, because I'm going to need your guys' help. I need kind of like a support group right now, because I've just watched the episode, and it pretty much devastated me. This was something that I thought might go down with Daenerys burning the entire city of King's Landing to ground, but I did not really expect to see it the way they represented it in this terrifying fashion. But I want to start from the beginning of this episode and kind of work my way through in sort of a logical, uh, chronological way. So first off, a big scene was with Varys, and he's writing those letters. He's going to send them out, telling him what the identity and the heritage of Jon Snow really is, that he's the rightful king of the Iron Throne of, of the Seven Kingdoms. And well, we find out that he gets caught by Tyrion who kind of fibs on him to Daenerys and well we see Daenerys kind of tapping into her lineage of the Targaryens very bloodthirsty fire and blood is their motto and she uses it in a terrifying fashion right in front of Tyrion and Tyrion turned on one of the friends that has been with him since almost the beginning well pretty much a large portion of the series with varies and it's just you know really sad to see like him saying goodbye but he knew that this would get out and and at this point Tyrion still believes in Daenerys but if this gets out too widespread then it's gonna just spell doom for her so we're already seeing like okay she is going very dark side at this point of the story then going ahead uh, with Tyrion we find out that Jaime Lannister gets captured on his way to King's Landing to kind of save his his queen his sister Cersei and well what happens in that point is that we have Tyrion just doing a heart to heart right he is doing his heart to heart saying look we have this backup plan we're gonna get Sir Davos smuggler to get them out of there with the dinghy and and you guys are gonna be safe your baby's gonna be safe he knows that you know they're gonna have a kid so it's gonna protect the lineage they're gonna go to Pentos and live a happily uh, ever after right it's kind of like okay that's that sounds like a great plan but we know with Game of Thrones it's probably not gonna work out as unfortunate as it is in the future so it's just nice to see Tyrion just thinking you know for everybody else other than himself trying to get those plans he's just a very genuine character which is why he's one of my favorite characters now getting into the actual war scene which was uh, majority of this entire episode this played out way differently than the last night that that episode with the white walkers and the night king which we still haven't heard about so that's kind of interesting maybe the next episode last episode but anyway i thought this was an excellent way to to again build up tension of all these forces lining up and that all goes to shreds as soon as drogon comes in and i and i love first off the animation of drogon looks amazing uh all the perspective shots behind the wing coming in like a dogfighter uh just tearing these ships apart and it was such as a triumphant moment where i'm cheering at the tv like never before like yeah we're finally taking these suckers out the lannisters are going down and she's taking out all these ballistas left and right and just that one moment when we see the golden company in front of the wall stand in front of john and and gray worm and unsullied and the darth Raki and that wall just comes comes down in flames and from that point on you see the carnage of what a dragon can do mind you we've been looking forward to a moment like this from episode uh, episode 10 of season one when we first seen the dragons uh come out of the shells and seeing this and especially after reading a lot of the books and the lore knowing what the how devastating the dragons can be and just seeing danny just burn these troops alive and everything's just going so well it's like yeah this is going according to plan and well when they get inside there things turn south pretty quickly and this is what really hit me hard was seeing the good characters the good guys right you're seeing these guys they're going in they're taking out these usurpers and well daenerys has other plans and from that moment on she starts torching not just the troops but the the innocent children the you know the mothers everybody is not safe at this point everybody's dying and then we see the Unsullied with Grey Worm who's going in and just starting killing Lannisters that are unarmed that lay themselves down to be unarmed. And, and this is where it really gets into something that I've never experienced 
to this visceral quality before is just the horrors of war when when people can't be commanded anymore and are entering a city and you hear about this throughout history our history is people just raping pillaging burning just and the way they, they shoot these scenes and with the dragon coming over with the with the fire and everything like this was nerve-wracking like literally this was super terrifying horrifying for me to watch where it was it was very difficult for me to actually watch especially seeing the innocents running through the streets it was just just absolutely just so much despair i just felt so bad because we have this character of daenerys stormborn mother of dragons who was one of my favorite characters to get behind like her story was was a great story of of rising up from nothing and claiming your birthright and i was so along with her for the whole journey in esos and to see myself just quickly turning to to hopelessness for this character and really having um, absolute hatred now against this character for doing what she did I get it she really wanted to get revenge but to kill all these innocents in in the way that they represented was just absolutely horrible to watch it was it was really hard for me to watch that especially from a character that I could get behind um, and, and seeing John and he was you know telling his troops like come back come back he can't even control John couldn't even control his troops and it was just so sad for me to see like even the men of the north were just going wild and just you know picking on these innocent women and, and John ended up having to st stand in front and actually kill one of his own men that was ridiculous that was something i didn't expect the way that this whole episode turned on itself the good guys turn into the bad guys and and then we have to get into this whole thing with Arya and the hound and Arya having that one moment with sandor kugain she literally says sandor thank you now these guys have had a rough relationship but they've really been buddies, you know, since way back in season three, you know, uh, you know, at least I still got chicken or whatever that line was when he was at the end. And then from that moment on, they kind of became buddies or tagging along. And we see him here in, in basically a, the apocalypse. We see them in the apocalypse and things are just going south. And and he, you know, gives her the best advice is like, look, it's not really worth it. Just get out of here. So he essentially just saved her life. And this is where I want to get into this long-awaited Clegane ball. We have Sandor Clegane versus Gregor Cleveland, like the mountain. Like this is something, the Hound versus the mountain. We've been waiting for this since like season two or three when we learned about the brother and how bad he was with the Hound burning his face. And the epic backdrop. Just looking at the backdrop of how epic it was, they're on a staircase that, you know, the walls are caving in around them. There's fire everywhere. And we know how much the Helen hates fire. Like, that is his immortal enemy. But standing in front of him is the person that was responsible for causing that fear of fire. So at that point, he doesn't care. He wants his whole life is revenge to get against the mountain. And he goes balls to the wall. And we are seeing this amazing duel where this guy is basically a zombie. The mountain has got, you know, these experiments done to him by Quiburn, which I thought that was kind of funny almost when he just tosses Quiburn and, and he just kills him instantly. But they get into this duel where the, the mountain is grabbing his sword, like not even reacting to the pain. I guess he has no nerve endings at this point because he does not react to anything. Gets stabbed through the stomach. And that moment at the end was just so important. Seeing that the hound, I, I you know, just actually charge and just take this leap of faith with his brother through the wall, into the fire, into their obviously death at that point because they felt like 300 feet or whatever it was um the moment when the hound is doing the same thing that he did to um the one character from season five um the the, the red viper right Oberyn martell there we go squeezing in his eyes i actually thought for a moment there that the hound was actually going to come out of that alive after he stabbed the mountain through the head with his dagger and the dagger is just stuck in there and he's still working like where is this ability to act coming from once his brain has been severed like what is going on and, and i thought for a minute there that we might have this other story where Arya is going to teach the hound like because she was blind at one point how to act like when he's blind so yeah i thought that was going to be a story in a blink of an eye and it was gone as soon as that happened but amazing absolutely amazing and carrying through with Arya's perspective following a character that we care about through the street, she's in the epicenter of where all the action is. Megor's hold fast where the queen was. That's where Drogon's just 
burning this thing to the ground and she has to get out of there and we have that camera focused on her from you know her perspective running through the streets we have this heroic moment where she's trying to save the women and they're going out and she's being very brave being very uplifting to these people and you just see them go down and that that's where it really hurt me like seeing these poor people just go down and you have the Darth Raki just mowing everybody down and people are screaming fires all over the place people are burned alive people are are burned and it's just like holy crap this is so visceral so just carnage everywhere to I've never seen anything like this in TV or, or movies to the to the scale of this and, and seeing her get out but every time we see her she's got more dust on her more ashes basically more blood and just fighting to survive and she makes it out in the end and that to me was just oh man that had my heart beating like way faster than it should be at rest it definitely wasn't at rest at that point Actually, for most of this episode, I had a very elevated heart rate. Um, not the first time it's happened with this show, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last. But finally, I want to talk about Jamie and his journey in this episode of, you know, just from entering in there and, and trying to get to Cersei and the door being blocked. And you got this this interaction like he's never going to make it. He's going to get burned alive. And he, he comes across Euron Greyjoy, who just straight up, you know, insults him. And he doesn't back now. He doesn't back down. This is a Greyjoy, a, a captain of the Greyjoy, the Lord of the Greyjoys. They are really good fighters. So to see, you know, him go toe to toe with this guy, though, yeah, he did just swim a long distance, so he's a bit fatigued at this point. But to still see, uh, you know, Jamie just fighting with every ounce of it being. Remember, he was learning to train with Bronn back in season five in Dorne, and he's been training ever since, even when. With his one arm gone he's still the Kingslayer he could still live up to that name even if he has one less arm but that's what made him and it doesn't matter to him he is fighting to survive he's using that hand to bash this guy's face in he gets stabbed a couple of times I thought he was dead and he comes back and he just kills Euron and and man or he leaves him for dead I assume he's gonna die you know it's Game of Thrones so if you don't see the guy die a lot of times you don't know if they're still, still surviving I think Stannis might come in the last episode and eh, maybe he's not. Maybe I should just give up on Stannis at this point. There's one episode left, though. But anyway, seeing that that pointing end when he actually meets with Cersei, they find out that there's no way out. They get in the Maker's Hole fast. All the rebels covering the exits. You know, it's 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 that it's that moment where as much as I hate Cersei, as much as I freaking describe, you know, despise her guts, I felt sympathy for her because in that moment she is panicking. And Jamie is the one to calm her down. Jamie is the one that says, look at me, it's just us. And in that moment, I don't care how much you hate Cersei, you got to feel a little bit a little bit of sympathy for her. And, and, and the way it all ends with them just embracing the, the brother, the sister from the very first episode. They've been in love and all these events transpired thanks to them pretty much. And to see them together at the end, I thought it was kind of poetic. But that is as much as I want to say, I think, about the episode. I know I'm kind of rambling on a little bit, but believe me, there is so much about this episode, and I'm going to be talking so much more about this episode in the future. There's just so much to break down about what happened in this episode. It was really a paradigm shift, I think. And, and now, looking ahead to the last episode, there's so much to do. Daenerys is now basically the ruler is there even an iron throne anymore that's the first question that iron throne is probably melted down to nothing at this point so what is there to even rule from i'm guessing she's going to be ruling from dragonstone this is going to be a reminder to the people of, of westeros the seven kingdoms that this is what happens when you disobey me i will burn your city to the ground mercilessly without remorse and that is her lesson even though she says she's doing this to get rid of tyrants She's looking like the worst tyrant of all time after doing this, killing all the people. Who's going to want to side by, you know, her? I think John is going to have some serious issues with Danny, obviously. I'm even debating if he's going to try to kill her at this point because of everything he witnessed from the perspective of being, uh, you know, a soldier on the ground, boots on the ground, seeing everything go down because it was her fault starting all this crap. Like, I don't know, but I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to try to kill Daenerys because of what happened. People are going to be just disgusted, just like I am, and I just watched the episode. So, what did you guys think of this episode of Game of Thrones? I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. 
what was what you experienced as being the hardest death for you to watch in this episode. Let's talk about it in the comment section below. So that is gonna do it for me, Star Wrapped. If you guys like this video, I talk a lot about Game of Thrones, plus I talk about other things such as Star Wars. So if you like this video, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that way you'll never miss another video. My name is Star Raptor. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.